Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Let's go over here. Let's go to Romans chapter 12. As we said last week, we had uh, gone into Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Then we get in there, verse 3 says, For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man, and every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Now, Paul begins here, and he's getting ready to talk about our gifts and our callings and the body of Christ. Um, but notice he says here that don't think of yourself any greater because he's dealt to every man the measure of faith. And, you know, we, we use that a lot of times to talk about that God's dealt to every man the measure of faith. We all have faith. But here it kind of has the import that possibly that how, what your callings or giftings are in the body of Christ, he's dealt you the faith to walk in those things. Okay? Because he goes on this, says this, for we, for we as... Uh, for as we have many members in one body, all members have not the same office. Now, that word office should be, uh, can be also translated function, which I think sounds better. Not just sounds better, I think it more accurately describes that instead of office. Somehow and other people kind of get the idea of office and all of a sudden they, you know, they, they got business cards printed up, you know, and, uh, you know, um, some title or whatever. And next thing you know, they're out running around telling everybody, well, I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm prophecy or I'm exhorter or I'm this, you know, exhorter Ed Taylor or, you know, I just, you know, really the word can be translated function. And that's really what he's talking about here. We function in the body. Each one of us has a function in the body of Christ. Thank glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. So we are, all members have not the same function. So we being many are one body in Christ. Every one member is one of another. Now that means that my function affects your function. And what your function is affects my function. And so we're to work together and not against each other. Amen. Uh, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given unto us, um, let us prophesy, uh, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Um, and really, it says here, you know, whether prophecy, and then let us prophesy is not in the Greek, it's added. So let's read it the way it would be without the, the added words. Whether prophecy according to the proportion of faith. If you prophesy, it has to be according to faith. Now, it can't be you just make stuff up and say, yea, thus saith the Lord. Anybody can say that, and it still not be anointed. You can go, yea, my son. Yeah, can I say, yea? Oh, that was deep. <laughs> no. You know, you, everybody can get a spiritual sounding voice. You ever heard people, you know, all of a sudden they get talking about the Holy Spirit, and all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I almost choke saying it. Why just, just, Holy, Holy Ghost, you know? I mean, God doesn't, God talks, I remember Ben Kinslow a number of years ago. He said, you speak Spanish, God speaks Spanish. You speak French, God speaks French. You speak Jive, God speaks Jive. Yeah. You know, God talks your talk. Now, I'm, now, without all the things you shouldn't be saying, I'm talking about he can communicate with you in a way you understand. All right? Hallelujah. Or ministry. And then he says, let us wait on our ministry. But that's also as a ministry, ministry. Uh, he that teacheth on teaching. He that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, uh, let him do it with simplicity, or he give with simplicity. He that rules with diligence, he that shows mercy with cheerfulness, let love with him be without dissimulation. That word means uh, unfeigned or just really be sincere. So let love be sincere. Okay? And um, uh, abhor that which is evil. Wow. How many people get taken to the mattresses when they address something that's evil and call not walking in love? And the Bible says abhor that which is evil. Amen? Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love, or phileo, Philadelphia, uh, where we get the, the uh, city named Philadelphia, phileo. In honor, you know, the city of brotherly love, okay? Um, in honor, preferring one another, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, 
rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of the saints, uh, given to hospitality, bless them which persecute you and curse not, bless and curse not, rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be it, all right, I'm going to stop there. Let's stop here because he, he, he goes on to say some more things. I want to go back up here to verse 6. Now, now, if you were around in the body of Christ, the charismatic circles, back around 1980 and, you know, maybe a little bit, but the, the early 80s, there was a teaching that was in the body of Christ all over the place called motivational gift. Some of you remember that teaching. Brother Bill, remember that? Yes. And they used Romans 6, and they took these different things, prophecy, exhortation, ministry, giving, uh, ruling, mercy, and basically did a Christian personality psychological personality assessment came up with all these different things that went along with them and then you were prophecy motivated and they call it your motivation so if you were prophecy motivated you were black and white you sell things the way they were and you just said it the way it was now what I found out from all those folks who were prophecy motivated every one of them found an excuse to be rude they just started running around saying oh, well, I just can't help it I'm prophecy motivated and, and honestly, in retrospect, I can't find that where that that's, is supported in Scripture. I cannot find, you know, and, and somebody, somebody actually called me the other day, uh, one, of my, one of my ministers, and said, you know, he's, he's, he's uh, helping with a, a, a group of people in a Bible study, and they're, they're really into this chapter right here, and he's concerned, he just didn't know how to address it. And I said, look, my take on this is this. This is not a complete list of the functions of people in the body of Christ. Yeah. It's It's... A generalization using a few things. We do that all the time. You know, uh, we, we, we go on and we tell somebody, now look, you know, we're doing this and this, this, this. Now, say this is going on and you do this, but you don't cover everything. I don't believe Paul was covering every function of the body of Christ in the here. Some people came out and made it into motivational gifting and they started teaching that. And really, honestly, they came up with a list of things that you did and didn't do. And you checked them all off. And when you got done, it told you whether you were prophecy motivated or exhortation motivated or mercy motivated. And that was your motivational gift. That is nothing but a personality test. They took world psychological techniques and applied it to Scripture and said, let the Scripture be applied to life. And made, and made something up. And everybody was going around and they were all trying to find what their motivational gift was. You know what, I think if we spent more time trying to be like Jesus and what the Word of God tells us to do with all the other things instead of trying to figure out what our motivation is and then look at the list of how we're supposed to act, we'd be better off. Now, I haven't heard that teaching in a number of years. Have you heard it, Brother Bill? It's, it kind of it went, went by the wayside. Why did it kind of go by the wayside? Because there's just nothing really there to substantiate it. But there's still people out there who believe it, so just if you hear it, just love Fluff, yeah, some fluff there, some fluff. Yeah, fluff and puff. Honestly, these are, these are just kind of a, a, a random few that Paul picked. Now, when I say random, I'm sure the Holy Spirit, in, in, you know, led him to write what he wrote. At the same time, they were not the full concept, you know, just like the works of the flesh. When you go down and look at the works of the flesh in Galatians chapter 5, right after the fruit of the Spirit, all right, okay, and it, it, that's not all the works of the flesh, those other things the flesh does, it's not listed there. All right? That's just a kind of a, the top five or six or whatever. You know, it's not, it's not all of them. And so here, I believe what he's saying here is that whatever your function is in the body of Christ, and he just goes on this several things here, but each time he comes back and tells them what he does, but notice the one thing that was in this was according to the proportion of faith. Whatever our function is in the body of Christ, when we find out what our place is from, you know, by spending time with the Lord and, and, and then God leading us, we find out where our place is in the body. Not everybody is called to be a pastor. You know, we have this old, you know, the old saying, and I, and I can say it's my wife's, you know, good, a good chunk Cherokee. And, and you know, and, the, and, and they always say, say this about in, in the Native Americans, that too many chiefs and not enough engines. You know, everybody wanted to be in charge. That meant everybody wanted to be in charge, nobody wanted to do the work. Well, you can't have everybody a chief. And no, you know, you got to have somebody to go do this. You can't have all generals and no privates. All right? You got to have somebody that does the grunt work that the leaders are saying do or whatever. You know, I guess that's why they call one, uh, what the army's grunts. Yeah. Marines are called jarheads. I don't know what they call the Air Force, but they call, you know, the Navy guys swabbies. The Air Force is what? I'm not even going to repeat that. Somebody in the church might be listening to it and they get offended. All right. 
But back up to verse 5, we being many have our, our one body, and every one members of another. And then, and then he goes, having gifts different. Each one of us are different in our call. In other words, you may not be a pulpit ministry. That doesn't mean you don't have a ministry. You're not, and I'm going to tell you something. One of the worst things in the world is for someone who's not called to teach in, 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 the, in, a, in a pulpit type ministry, whether an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, or teacher, try to do that because just because they want to. Or one of those trying to stand in one of the other places they're not called to stand. Um, one of the great healing evangelists of the, of the, of the 50s had a tremendous healing ministry. Dad Hagen used to say he could line 10 people up that were deaf or blind Deaf, dumb, or blind, and nine out of ten would instantly get healed. But then he got where he wanted to teach. And, and, and Brother Lindsay went to the man and said, you know, you're not a teacher. Yeah, but I want to. And they, and they had a whole doctrine come out of it. It was named after his last name. And um, he, he died early. And the Lord, the, the, the Lord prophesied and spoke and said, yeah, the end of the year will come and go. And he who stands at the forefront of the healing ministry uh, will not be here. He'll be absent from the earth. December 31st, that next year he died. Because he wanted to try to stand somewhere else. We need to find out where we're supposed to be, where we're supposed to function. And look, if you're supposed to function coming to the church and being a good usher, now let me say this. Whatever you do in the church and you're functioning in the church and that kind of thing, we're all called to go share Jesus with people. You're still called to go preach the gospel in all the world. You're supposed to go tell your coworkers, your neighbors, your friends, everybody about Jesus and bring them into the kingdom. Everybody's got that calling. Why? Because the head of the church said so. Hello? All right. So I just kind of wanted to you know, clarify that because so many people got off on that, and, and it became such a big thing. I remember um, we, we had somebody back in our home church. We came out of down in Greenville. Oh, really, it's over in Greenville, but in, uh, down, in eastern Carolina, they call it down east. Don't know why we do it down there. That, that's something that somebody came up with trying to come up with a, a, a uh, regional nickname that would stick so they call it down east i don't know how you go down east east is east but anyway uh that's what they did so they call it down east you're down east and um where was i going with that in greenville yeah uh had somebody in our church and, and this person that somebody came in and taught this motivational teaching and they they were they're going around telling about i'm prophecy motivated and they were just going around just blowing people's doors in I mean, you know, and I can't help it, I'm prophecy motivated. Their excuse for walking out of love was I'm prophecy motivated. And they kept getting in there and kept getting in there and kept getting in there. Today they've renounced their relationship with Jesus Christ. They will die and go to hell. Because they trampled underfoot the blood of the Son of God and counted the blood of the covenant where they were sanctified an unholy thing. They mock the blood of Jesus now. They mock God. And they know better. So they know better. These are not excuses to be ornery. Amen. Why? Because everything is everything in the body of Christ is done to the edification of the body. If we go to Ephesians chapter 4 and look at the... Uh, uh, well, let's look over there. Now, Romans 4. Paul wrote Ephesians also. So maybe he gives us a little more insight when he gets into uh, Ephesians. Because he is talking about the body. He, he may bring, uh, maybe uh, he, when he wrote to Ephesians, he, he felt the release to be more, have more clarity. Look here in verse 15, or verse 14. Henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in, every, in the measure of every part, making increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. What is the ultimate thing that the body is supposed to be doing? Edifying itself in love. We are working to the common good of the development and the, and, and the strength of the body. Now, that doesn't mean we don't address error and we don't correct error, you know, because the body dresses, when, when, when the body's injured and, the, and there's something wrong in the body, the body goes to fix it. 
For using the natural body as an example, when, when you uh, get a cut or injury, the body goes to fix it. Okay? And it rid, starts ridding of, of, of things that shouldn't be in there. Okay? So, you know, Paul gets, you know, says here that, you know, that, uh, that, the body, that we're here in the body. We're to, every joint, every joint supplies. We're all suppliers to the body of Christ. So whatever your function is, you do it according to the proportion of faith that goes with your function. You don't, you don't, you don't try to stand somewhere else. I'm going to tell you something. Um, I don't know what happened tomorrow if I had 5,000 people in church. You know, wake up one day, you got 5,000 people, what would you do? Maybe you're not equipped to that. So don't get upset if you don't have that and somebody else does. If you're not equipped for it, you don't do it. Get yourself in trouble. <laughs> Big trouble. All righty. So, so, but let's, you know, so we talked about those things. Let, verse 9, let love be sincere. Abhor that which is evil. Evil. Cleave to that which is good. What, now, what did Paul say in another place? Uh, hold fa uh, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Why it is in the body of Christ, particularly the charismatics, and I'm, I'm a charismatic. I grew up Pentecostal holiness, came over among the charismatics into the word of faith. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm one of them. I've been, in all, I've been in all of it. But what is it about charismatics that anything that comes down the pipe that's got a woo-woo with it, they jump on it? Thank God for the sensitivity of the Holy Ghost, but you've got to be sensitive to what's the Holy Ghost and what's not the Holy Ghost. Just because you got a goosebump doesn't mean it was the Lord. The devil can give you a goosebump. I've had it. I've been watching, you know, maybe watching TV or at the theater, and they show one of those trailers like uh, Poltergeist or, you know, those, uh, those, what are those, um, those movies where they did where they went through the woods and all that stuff with the cameras and was, Huh? Blair Witch Project and that kind of stuff. And I'm going to tell you, some of that stuff is, has a demonic anointing on it. And I got goosebumps. Well, it wasn't God. Somebody comes in and teaches stuff. You know, I remember a number of years ago, somebody was going around teaching, and, and they had this new teaching on um, the Mary Mouse. And it was, it, it had, it, 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 that word dealt with the soul or something. I forgot exactly what it dealt with. But everybody's going around, and, have you had, heard of the Mary Most? They just all got, you know, get weird about it. You don't have to get weird. We're not supposed to be weird. We're supposed to be building people up. I've seen people just try to do everything they can and knock somebody down. Remember one time I, uh, I was uh, at a Copeland convention back in 18, eight, I think 81, right after I graduated, he was down in Charlotte. Huh? That's an 1881? Don't I look good for 156? All right. Now I'll tell you, the world will keep you young. <laughs> no, 1981, Copeland was down in Charlotte, and we went down there. And I, I remember, now at that time, I just had a habit. I would shake people's hands and wink, you know, just, just, just some kind of habit I had picked up. And I, I, you know, they said, well, great, somebody ran out to around, grabbed this guy's hand, shook his hand, and, and, and I, my, I did my traditional wink just because of a habit. And he stops and goes, and starts quoting the scripture on he that winketh. <laughs> and I, and you know, I'm not that saved. Okay? My birth, my spirit is born again, or born again, if you want me to get real southern, born again. But my flesh is not. And I, I mean, at that moment, the thoughts came through my head of a bam bam moment. Bam bam, bam bam, bam bam. Like, you jerk idiot. I mean, that's how I was. Yeah, I've grown up since then. I would just call him a jerk. Anyway. We, we're, we're, you know, out trying to outdo one another, and, and we're hurting each other, trying to outdo one another instead of edifying one another. Now, if there's error, we have to deal with error. But you can still deal with error in love when you're dealing with people. Particularly when it's in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Now, when you're dealing with stuff in general, you can be a little more, uh, Paul was, but a little more bold. How many remember over there we talked about the circumcisers came in? Now, I'm going to put it to you in King Jimmy. You know, he says they had, they had crept in trying to bring everybody back and all said they had to be circumcised. And he said, I would together, they were all cut off. And what he really, he said in the Greek was this, not just wish you would be circumcised, go ahead and cut everything off. That's what he said in the Greek. That's what it says. 
The King James dressed it up. Okay? So Paul got really bold in a general sense, but I believe in one-on-one -on -one people, you know, you deal with people differently one-on-one. -on -one. Okay? Unless they're just hard-headed and obstinate, then you have to deal with them face-to-face -face like Paul did with Peter. But, we, you know, um, we're to edify one another. We're to build the body up. If somebody's wrong, we want to correct them and bring them in. You, which are spiritual. If a brother's overtaken in a fault, that can be, false doctrine can be a fault. And if he's overtaken, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Why? Lest ye be tempted also. It's amazing how many people want love and mercy when they mess up, but don't want to give it when somebody else does. Now, right now, there's a, you know, there's a lot of, you know, Dr. Miles Monroe uh, and his wife and his daughter and, and nine other pastors and their wives were killed in their plane crash when it took off out of the Bahamas the other day, ran into a bad storm, and, um, so, you know, don't know what happened exactly. Now somebody's on the internet just blasting every day how that, that you know, that Ed Dufresne getting killed in a plane crash. Uh, this bishop over in England, the Anglican priest over in England got killed in a motorcycle wreck, and now Miles Monroe was killed in a plane crash. It's all the judgment of God because they're teaching false error and prosperity and stuff. They got false doctrine in their teachings. <sighs> the day he dies, just blasting, you know, that, Hey, this is the judgment of God. Well, my goodness. You just want to toot your own horn and talk about how great you are. Yeah. You, you've just got such spiritual insight. I mean, my Think about the people that are, that, are, that, are, that are hurting because of the people that were killed. It's not just one minister. It's, it was several ministers and their wives. What? They were going to a conference. Okay. So we have to, you know, we have to walk in love. We have to be merciful. Now, yes, we have to deal with false error, but, you know, deal with the error. Don't deal with, the, don't deal with um, you know, which, when, when, most of the time we don't use names simply because we don't, we're not after the person. We're after what's wrong. And we want to correct error with truth. This is being taught, but this is what the Word says. We want to deal with error with truth because that's, that's, that's how we get around the error. We get to the truth. Amen? And then you weigh the error against the truth, and then you can see what's right. So we need to, we need to be um, sincere in love. We need to abhor which is evil. Now let me say something, folks. There's a big mantra out there right now that homosexuality, uh, there's nothing about it in the Bible. The, 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 the writers of the Bible and the, and the later uh, uh, scholars were wrong that these words meant something different and they had nothing to do with that. And God uh, condones and accepts and affirms, you know, same-sex marriages as long as they're in a, mon in a monogamous relationship like a husband, a man, and a woman are. That's error. That's evil. Go study every culture that has had a high propensity of homosexuality and see what happened to their culture. It, 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 we abhor that which is evil, but we do cleave to that which is good. Amen. I do not condone evil. So if you come to me and ask me, is, is homosexuality a sin? And the answer will be yes. And continue living that lifestyle and God will give you over to a reprobate mind, meaning a mind void of judgment. You won't be able to judge right and wrong. And then you would just go on and live by the complete unabated lust of the flesh. And ultimately the end will be hell. Which is why we have to preach the gospel. And we can't tell people they're okay when they're not okay. We have to say, you know, God loves you, God will forgive you, and God will deliver you. But you can't keep living like that. Nor can you keep shooting people, and you can't keep robbing banks, and you can't keep whatever else. And then we're to cleave to that which is good. If it's good, we hold fast to it. Well, what's good? It's the Bible, whatever the God's Word says, what God has taught us. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. You know, there's brotherly love, there's, a, there's uh, agape, the God kind of love, but then there's phileo, the brotherly love. Amen? We love one another. Not just with the God kind of love, not just with, you know, but we have brotherly love one towards another. And honor, we prefer one another. 
How much damage has been done in the body of Christ, people jockeying for position to get up to the top uh, while they step on everybody else's heads? When we're to be preferring one another, caring for one another, amen? Thinking, what would I, what would, how would I feel if they did that to me? <laughs> yeah, that went over good. Then he goes on and gives some, you know, some other natural things. Be not, be, well, just different things. Not slothful in business. Fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. We rejoice in hope. We're patient in tribulation. We're continuing instant in prayer. We've been doing, how many been watching our 31 days of prayer? How to radically change your prayer life. Now, if you haven't, go to the webpage. They're all, they're all out on the webpage. They're all out there on the um, church Facebook page. You can go through and listen to all of them. They're little one-minute to one-and-a-half-minute clips. Today, I did one, and I thought, man, that's got to be two minutes. It was a minute and 13 seconds. I packed a lot in a minute and that 13 seconds. I'm going to tell you what. Hallelujah. And, and isn't that great? Just that little bitty clip, you know, continuing instant in prayer. Distributing to the necessity of the saints. The necessity. We're not to make people dependent upon church welfare or government. I'm, I'm, I'll tell you, one of the most evil things in the world is to make people dependent on the government. Yeah. It's one thing to help people. It's another thing to enslave them in that system. Well, these people are to do that. They should be, they, they're, God, people should do this for them. You're enslaving them. If we're not, you know, like it's like the old saying, give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. Teach him a fish, he'll eat forever. We've got a system that enslaves a whole group of people into a system where, where and, and really the bridge out isn't there. A few make it out every once in a while. But the truth of the matter is the gap between getting government aid and assistance and getting and standing on your own, there's a gap there. That, that, that you can't hardly get across, and so those who are in that system can't get out. I think, can I just say something? I believe it's by design. I don't believe it's, it's, it's uh, just wanting to help. I believe it's by design to trap and enslave people. And so we, we have to be knowing this. We, we, uh, we uh, minister and we give um, to the necessity, distribute to the necessity of the saints. If they're, if they're short, we help them out. Okay, we do. We do things. I mean, I, many times we've gone and uh, in the past when people uh, in the church, especially when we had more more happening in the church, more money flowing in the church. What I was really after. Uh, go to Thanksgiving or Christmas. People didn't have turkeys or or hams or whatever to have a dinner for their family. We, the church would go buy it all, everything, everything, not just the turkey, the ham, the 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 potatoes, the rolls, the canned vegetables, everything, the butter. And take it to them and give it to them so they, their family could be ministered to and have a, you know, not sit there wishing they had something besides, you know, um, spam burgers. They, they, had a good, they had a good time. We've, we've done that numerous times. Sometimes we've done it, nobody knows. We just went and did it. Even when, when the church didn't do it, we did it personally, help people out. We're to minister or distribute to the necessity of the saints. We're to be given the hospitality. You're supposed to be hospitable. All right? Um, and we're to bless them that persecute you and, and, and bless them not and curse not. You don't mean cussing folks out. If you are, you've got a problem. We don't need no cussing Christians. Now listen to this. this is, rejoice with them that rejoice. You should be happy when others get blessed yeah. instead of mad that you didn't. And then we're to weep with them that weep. We're to, we're to help carry the burden of those who lost something. I'm going to tell you, sometimes Christians get so... Our circles have... We've done some stupid stuff. Honestly. People dying and somebody, you know, somebody going to go in there and tell everybody why they died and why they weren't in faith and all. You don't need to hear they weren't in faith. You know, when they say, why did this happen? They ain't looking for an answer. It's grief talking. Now, maybe later you have an opportunity to minister to them, but you minister to them. You don't slam them to the concrete and beat them. Well, I'm just going to tell you, they're not in faith. That's why they died. Anybody ever been in a funeral where somebody preached and put the person in hell? I have. Preacher, get right up there and say this. They busted hell. What? I mean, just went right on. I know they didn't serve God, so they went. To, and the family's over here bawling and squalling. 
And if you don't want to go where they went, come down here and get saved. There's times to minister to people. There's times to be, not be a bozo. Hello? What do you do if you, don't, if you don't know or you know the person wasn't saved? They're in the hands of a just God. They're in the hands of a just God. What's that mean? If they're supposed to go to hell, he's just. They will go to hell. But you don't have to sit there and beat the family up with it. Amen. They're already grieving. You don't need to kill them. So we're to weep with them that weep. We're to feel their, be compassionate in their time of sorrow. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things. But condescend to men of low estate, be not wise in your own conceits. Now, that just means don't get haughty, don't get lifted up, don't be prideful. I'm going to tell you something now. Um, we, we ministers need, to, and I'm just, I'm just going to throw me right in there with everybody because I'm a minister. We need to be more aware that how we conduct ourselves it represents, has a representation on Jesus. And when you get high minded and think because you've got some money, you've got a lot of money, that you can walk around and begin to act arrogant. I don't drive that kind of car. There's an arrogance in that. Amen? <clears throat> <clears throat> the only time we know that Jesus rode on a donkey is when he came into Jerusalem. Um, and that was a preparation for some things. And that was the Cadillac of the day. Well, he drove the Cadillac of the day. But he only drove it once that we know of, that we have record of. The rest of the time he walked. And if anybody had the right to be, to be carried on the staffs between four men and ride in a chariot, like a chariot type seat or something, you know, and be, and be uh, you know, lauded and, and, and praised would be Jesus. We have to be careful that we don't take on the world's attitudes in an attempt to prove some biblical principle. You know, that God wants us rich and we're to walk in prosperity and we're to have a, you know, we're to, we're to have the air that we're this. And I'm going to tell you something. There's a, there's a pastor somewhere. I, I became friends with him. And he, he's, their, their, their church puts on their website, you know, come out and hear his excellency, the most honorable bishop so-and-so, and the queen of the certain city they're in and her name. And I was then thought, now I'm going to get real 70-ish on you, early 80-ish, gag a maggot. His excellency, it's bad enough to gag a maggot, and maggots, you know, what maggots eat. Boy, that went over, you can tell the generation don't know what we're talking about. The old valley girl talk from the late 70s, early 80s, they say things like gag a maggot. That's enough to gag a maggot. His Excellency, the Most Honorable. I'm like, there's one thing. Paul said, "Give you got to give honor." There's one thing to give honor, and there's another thing to get into idol worship over a man. There's a big difference. We need to be careful, and we need to honor the Lord. And here it says. You know, mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Notice that Jesus, what did Jesus do? He went and ate with the publicans and sinners instead of walking around that he was too good to do such a thing. We minister, some of us, guys, we got we to get a real reality check. Get back into the world where the people you're ministering to live. Hello? Stop walking around like you're a god. And that you walk on water every other day. Have a heart for the, for the, that you're, really, Jesus said something that we all, 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 I'm talking to the ministers right now. Jesus said something that we all ought to take heed to. Because when he came to Peter to wash his feet, Peter said, not so, Lord. And then Jesus said to him, he said, if I wash not thy feet, then thou hast no part with me. And then he said this, for the Son of Man came not to be ministered to but to minister. Now, the word minister can be serve. Not to be served, but to serve. The word, if you're a minister of the gospel, you're a servant of the gospel from God to the people. You are not God. You're representing him, and I just have a hard time 
Because Jesus didn't have people going around calling him your excellency, the most royal this and the royal that. We don't say, we call, Paul's call, Peter calls Paul our beloved brother. He didn't call him his excellency. We get, we get carried away with things. And we're to be, you know, we're not to be mindful of high things. We don't need man praise and man worship. Hello? Well, you, know, it, you need to respect those who minister. You need to honor those who minister. You don't need, you don't need to take them and start treating them like, you know, oh, that's just Ed over there. I, you, know, you can talk to him any way you want to talk to him. Now, there is a place where you, you draw a line and you keep the maintain the proper respect for the gift that God's going to use to minister to you. But he's not God. I'm not God. No minister is God. No apostle is God. No bishop is God. None of us. And I'll be honest with you. When they began to do homage uh, to Paul, uh, Paul and Barnabas, I believe it was, remember, the, the, uh, and then they started preaching about, you know, that you see all these, your, your city totally given to worship, and you have all these different gods. And he said, but you have one inscribed to the unknown God, him we've come to declare unto you. And they called Paul, uh, Jupiter, Barnabas, Mars, I believe it was. And they began, and they got ready to begin to worship them. And they rent their clothes and said, men, we are of like passions, just like you. They wouldn't let them do that. Now, see, people, because they either get blessed or ministered, want to naturally gravitate to man worship. And it's up to the ministers to say, no, that's not right. I put my pants on the same way you do, guys, one leg at the time. Hello? Are you here? I get hungry at night, I get tired. If I stub my toe, it hurts. And I don't walk in words. As a matter of fact, probably with my weight, I sink faster than you do. Okay? So we, we need to have honor and respect because of the gift. We don't need to be in a, in a man worship situation. You know? Pastor Ed. Oh, the whole ground he just walked to, that's holy ground. Let's cut up the carpet and worship it. Mm -hmm. We get crazy. Everybody say crazy. Condescend to me on those things. Be able to talk to people. Listen, we can set ourselves up so high we can't minister to people. God needs us to be able to minister to people. Amen. God needs our, our, our ability to not be so high and mighty that we can't talk to the, the lowly individual. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things that are honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, now listen to this, if it be possible, as much as lieth within you, live peaceably with all men. Now, If Paul had just said, live peacefully with all men, that would be a hard task sometime. Because yeah. there's some men you can't live peaceably with. You just have to stay away from them. He said, as much as possible, and then as much as lies within you, if it, live peaceably with all men. If not, listen, um, people use certain scriptures. The Bible says, live peaceably with all men. And then they run there and they use that to beat people up, make them stay in relationships, women stay in relationships with, with husbands where they're beating them and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, Crazy stuff. Now, you know, if, it's, if some things are not healthy for you. If you've got an unhealthy relationship, you need to break it. Yeah. Oh, you've got to walk in love. Yeah, but if it's possible, I'm going to, as much as lies within me, I'm going to live peacefully. But if I can't, then I, I have to break this off. It's not healthy. Right. There are people who would use the scriptures to manipulate you to keep you under their control. That's not healthy. And it's not God. Right. It's witchcraft. It's manipulation. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place uh, for, unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Be, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Now, I think here in chapter 12, man, you have to go right back up to verse 1. Give your body a living sacrifice unto God, which is your spiritual service. Because there's going to be days you're going to do stuff that's going to be a sacrifice for you to do them. Because what you want to do is take a two-by-four and put it right upside their head. 
while you're singing. That's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it, pow, pow. That's, anyway, sorry. I heard Casey and Sunshine Band the other day somewhere. Anyway. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jeff. Some things I shouldn't say in church. It just, it just sparks other people to move to a higher level. All righty. We just, we just finished Romans chapter 12. We'll get into chapter 13 tomorrow. I think 13, 14, 15, maybe 16. I think we have 16 chapters of Romans. And we're done. We're going to get done with these soon. Uh, hopefully we'll have this done by the first of the year. We'll get into the next section of Paul's writings, all right? And this is the last of the long books. Okay, we start moving into the, the epistles. You know, the, the, uh, uh, we'll get into his epistles in prison. We'll get into his personal epistles and that kind of thing. Uh, and, all, and all in the correct order. And uh, see how he wrote and when he wrote these things. And post prison, he's got prison epistles, post to prison epistles, that kind of stuff. We'll, we'll get into all those. All righty. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.